Welcome to our tutorial about basic mixing. Mixing is when you turn your audio or MIDI recordings into something that sounds like a song with balanced parts that fit together well. In this tutorial, we'll be covering a couple basic concepts you'll use while mixing. Cubase has a mixer window from which you'll do most of your mixing. You can open the mixer under Devices and select Mixer. Close it by clicking on the red X. You can also open it with the shortcut key F3. Right-click and select Always on top to prevent the mixer from disappearing when you click outside of it. The mixer window is really convenient. You can see and adjust all of your channels at once. It looks just like a hardware analog mixer with a channel strip for each track and a slider that you use to adjust the volume. Let's talk about the various areas on the mixer. The common panel on the left gives you a bunch of controls that affect all your channels in the mixer. This is very convenient for reorganizing your view so you can make more efficient use of your monitor space. We'll be learning what each of these controls does later in this course. Here are the input buses. Here are the channels for each track in the middle. On the far right of the mixer are our output buses. We can resize each portion of the window by mousing over the dashed line and then dragging right or left once the cursor becomes a double-sided arrow. When you mix, the first thing you'll probably do is set your levels. You don't need the input channels available. You can hide them by clicking here in the common panel. This control means hide all inputs. Let's have a listen. While we're listening, we can drag the channel faders of each of our tracks up and down to adjust their levels. My strings are a little bit loud. I am going to need to lower those. Let's stop our playback and talk a little bit about this interface. The channel meters were those colored bars moving up and down. They indicate the output level of the track. It's just a rough graphic representation. If you want to get the fader back to the default 0 dB, just Alt or Option click in the fader area. You can also enter a level numerically. Just double click in the channel level area and type in your value. Press Enter and Cubase will accept your entry. These little numbers here show the peak meter value, in effect, the loudest level of signal so far on your track. You can double click the peak meter value to reset it. While you're mixing, be careful not to raise your channel faders too much. It's possible that one of these might make your output signal clip. If I set my string value very high in play, let's see if I'll go into the red on the output. Yes, you see how hot it's getting over there? And the clip indicator lit up. Let's stop the playback. Lower the fader back to zero. And let's click on this clip indicator to reset the warning light. Don't lower your master output slider also. Just watch for the clipping. You may want to set up some panning while you're mixing. Panning moves the signal in a stereo mix from position to position. You can balance it in the middle of the left and right speakers, lean it to the left or right, or have the signal coming only from the left or right speakers. At the top of each channel strip is its panner. The default value is centered. You can drag the value right or left to adjust the pan amount. The amount of the pan is indicated here. To keep the signal balanced in the middle of the left and right, leave the pan in the middle at center. You can Alt or Option click anywhere in the panner area to get it back to zero or the default value. If you drag all the way to the left or right, that's how you get the signal only in your left or right speakers. Let's restore to center with an Option or Alt click. You may want to listen to a track soloed. If so, 
press the S button. This mutes all other tracks, or at least those tracks without S selected. You can have several tracks soloed or muted at one time. You can quickly clear all mutes and solos with the Deactivate All Mute and Deactivate All Solo buttons in the common panel to the left of the mixer. Sometimes you might want a track to always play even if you're soloing another track. If that's the case, you can Alt or Option click on the Solo button. This puts the track in what's called Solo Defeat Mode. This means that the track will always play even if you're soloing another track. Solo Defeat Mode is indicated by this yellow D. You can Alt or Option click it again to take it out of the Solo Defeat Mode. The yellow D will turn back to an S. At this point you'd be ready to add effects, EQ, and automation. And this concludes our overview of basic mixing.